What's up guys? Welcome back to This Just In. Thank you for joining me today. Uh, in this video, we're going to take a quick look at a stock that gives us a lot of exposure to the online gambling and sports betting industry. I think these guys are going to have a ton of opportunity moving forward. They just signed a really nice deal with the NFL, so let's not waste any time. Let's jump right in. All right, guys, before we get started today, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell notification so you can stay up to date. I try to post any, you know, new videos every day with like gross stocks, penny stocks, anything I think can help us grow our portfolios and become better investors. Uh, there's a link down in the description to my Patreon account. Come join the family. I was doing the first 100 patrons for just a dollar, but I just dropped it down to the first 50. It's filling up quick. I think we've got a little under 20 spots left. Uh, you'll get access to the private Discord where we talk stocks, uh, links to four different portfolios so you can see exactly what I invest into. And then anytime I buy or sell a stock up to the second I do it, I send out a notification so you can follow along. I've also got a watch list that I'm gonna start sending out every Sunday. Uh, for the week and then I've got a price target channel as well so if you want to see that if you want to be a part of the community be a part of the family help us grow the channel come join us it's a great community great people I would love to have you I do want to say thank you so much to my current patrons and my subscribers I love you guys more than you will ever know uh, it is huge for me uh, that you guys gave me your support it means more to me uh, than anything. So thank you. Um, but guys, let's jump in. Um, I've got a really cool stock today. I'm digging it. Uh, this is the DMY uh, technology group uh, that's taking this stock public through, a, through the SPAC merger. Uh, we've already invested in RSI, uh, the quantum computer, DMYI. So uh, we're just going to pick up the other one. Uh, this group has done some really nice SPACs in the past. Uh, this is Genius Sports though. Uh, they are I want to say the number one uh, holder of official data rights with sports leagues. So essentially uh, what these guys do is they will enter in like multi-year uh, deals, licensing deals with, uh, you know, global sports leagues uh, for the rights to access their data and redistribute it uh, to, you know, online sports books and all of these different, uh, you know, companies that need the, the data for sports betting, uh, things like that. Uh, they also offer a technology and a software that is really cool, kind of sets them apart from their competition uh, to these local smaller sports leagues uh, that can't gather their data for themselves uh, in exchange for the rights to distribute it. And so they're essentially making these with local sports uh, events make up 94% of all sporting events. So, uh, you know, you take a small league that can't gather their data on their own and, uh, you know, Genius will go in, give them their technology, give them their software, uh, make their life 10 times easier because now they can gather their data for, uh, you know, the right to be able to kick it out to the online sports books. So they're literally like ingraining themselves into these leagues, uh, which creates a very big barrier to entry uh, because of the multi-year licensing agreements and the partnerships and the uh, relationships that they build with these leagues. So uh, I'm very bullish on this. I think that this stock could do very well. You know, the online sports betting industry is getting massive. Uh, when you're looking at just directly sports betting, you've got some big competition, DraftKings, uh, RSI, Penn and Tell, you know, all these different online gambling companies where this side of it, where just the, just the data distribution side of it has a lot less competition uh, with much harder uh, barriers to entry. The Their core customers are um, online sports bet, sports books, excuse me. <clears throat> and as in-play betting gets bigger and bigger, you know, where you can bet right there in the middle of the game, play by play, quarter by quarter, whatever it is, uh, these online sports books, these online betting companies, they are in need of low latency, like right there, accurate data more and more. So um, it, it's, it's getting bigger and bigger and growing with the online gambling uh, industry. So this is their website. You can kind of come on here and check it out. Um, they've got, you know, some cool information on here. They've got a video you can watch. Uh, this is a very cool. I wanted to show you guys this. So it says uh, Genius uh, Sports 
uh, sorry, uh, SPAC DMY Technology Group, which is taking Genius Sports public, jumped 24% in after hours trading after the National Football League signed a multi-year agreement with Genius Sports uh, to be its new data rights provider. This was on April 1st, so uh, four days ago. Uh, terms weren't given, though CNBC reported that it's a four-year cash and equity deal with options. The agreement may be valued at over $1 billion over the life of the contract if additional years are tacked on. Uh, Horizon Acquisition Corp, which is reportedly in a deal to take sports radar public, fell 4.6% as Genius Sports is replacing sports radar with the new contract. The NFL has had an agreement with Sports Radar to provide data since 2015. Guys, Sports Radar, Radar was like, in my opinion, their biggest competition. And I don't know exactly how it works. So if I'm wrong on this, please correct me. Uh, but I, from my understanding, I'm, I, what, I, what I think it is, is uh, when you sign a deal, like so Sp Sports Radar had the data for the NFL, right? I want to say that they were then giving it to Genius Sports. So Genius Sports was having to, to work with Sports Radar and pay Sports Radar for the data. Uh, now that uh, Genius Sports has the deal with NFL and Sports Radar doesn't, I believe that these other companies have to now get the NFL data from Genius Sports. But again, I'm not quite sure if I'm accurate on that. So please correct me down in the comments if I'm wrong. Uh, but I'm pretty sure that that's how it works. I, I don't think that they sign multi-year agreements with multiple different companies, but I may be wrong. When you do a licensing deal, I thought it was like one person gets that license and that's it. Uh, I mean, if I was Genius Sports and I signed a big billion dollar contract with the NFL, I would be pretty upset if they gave it to my competition. But hey, I have no idea how it works. So check on that. But this is huge, guys. This is huge. Uh, the NFL is obviously one of the most viewed sports out there, especially in the U.S. So uh, the, the deal with, that they just made is, is big, big. Um, okay, let's take a couple things out of the investor presentation. I'm going to go through it kind of quick. I will link it below if you want to go more in depth on it. I just want to hit some key points. Uh, so real quick, it says our mission uh, to be the official data technology and commercial partner that powers the global ecosystem connecting sports, betting, and media our business. We collect official live sports data and we provide that data and mission critical technology to sports books, which cannot run without it. Uh, guys, think about it like this. Uh, Fidelity, Webull, Robinhood, uh, any of these stock market brokers, right? That data to the sports books, this, this live sports uh, data is just as important as the data to Webull, Fidelity, Robinhood, all these brokerages uh, that the stock market has. So like the New York Stock Exchange, the NASDAQ, all of these different uh, you know stock exchanges, they have to then give that data to these online brokerages. And without it, they would be pretty screwed. I mean, you know, you think about it, logging into Fidelity and not having, uh, you know, accurate sport, uh, stock information. And if you notice on like TradingView and a couple other platforms, you actually have to pay additional money uh, to get real time data from the NASDAQ and certain other, uh, you know, other brokerages. Uh, and so, or other exchanges, excuse me. And so, uh, you know, again, the reason why I'm, I'm relating that is because that's what we do is stocks. And uh, I just want to show you the the relevance of how important this data is to online sports books. It's the same importance as uh, brokerages is stock uh, information. So very, very important. Um, okay, a couple of things here. Um, I want to show you this right here. So they've got um, like tier one sports, which only makes up like 6% of the events that they do. Like I said, 94% of sporting events is local uh, sporting leagues that most of the time cannot collect their data on their own, like these big and you know NBA, uh, you know the NFL stuff like that. They they have a hard time collecting their data as a local sports league. So it it, it makes so much sense to sign an agreement with a company like Genius that's got this really great software that collects it for them. Um, so as you can see here, the rights cost is much higher with these big. Uh, you know, sports leagues, um, which competitive market selective rights and acquisitions. Uh, but these ones are lower contract deals, uh, but it's more long-term rights agreements in exchange for software and D uh, mini me's right fees. So uh, having access to a long tail of events is vital for sports books operators. 
A um, couple of things here. Okay. We all know that the uh, the online sports betting and the online gambling is growing rapidly in the U.S. Um, out of a possible 19 states, Genius is live in 10 of them. Uh, they've hit, they have submitted applications for two and has begun the pre-application process for the remaining seven. So there's 19 total. They're in more than half of them. They've got two applications out and they've got seven pending. So uh, they're really ramping up and trying to capture as much of this U.S. market as they possibly can. Now, I think that U.S. might have a couple of states that don't ever get there. Maybe Utah. I don't know. Um, is Utah legal? No, they're not in there. I don't know if you, I don't think it is. But uh, the U.S. is going to continuously grow. Now, the one thing that I do like is they're worldwide. They're not just relying on the U.S. to grow their the online sports betting. They're in all of these different countries, uh, which, you know, is a ever growing market as well. So I think the short term, the US gives them the most opportunity right away, like within the next year or two, uh, because the, I want to say the US sports betting industry is growing at like a 30% compounded annual growth rate year over year. And it's going to be like a $6 billion opportunity to the total addressable market. So big, big, uh, you know, uh, money there. Um, last thing here, this is their revenue growth over the past five years. Uh, you can see here in 2016, they did 42 million, 68 million in 2017, 85 million in 2018, 116 million in 2019, 130 million uh, in the uh, last 12 months of June 30, 2020. And then in full year 2020, they did 145 million. Uh, they kind of say here, re, uh, reflects performance despite sporting events canceled due to COVID-19. So that's a 250% uh, growth rate since 2016 to 2020, which is huge. Um, guys, you can kind of see here their revenue breakdown, uh, reoccurring versus uh, you know straight revenue. I'm big on reoccurring revenue. That's my business. That is all it's made up of. The upfront, the completion payments that we charge for our websites mean nothing. Uh, obviously that gets us day to day, but the reoccurring revenue is really what we focus on. It's a, the biggest part of our business. So having 60% of their revenue being uh, reoccurring is massive. And then you can see here, their top 10 customers make up 30% of their revenue, which I like because what that essentially means is if it was backwards, like 70, 30, 70% was their top 10 customers, that's a little more risky because they they lose one or two of those customers. They're done, not done, but it's going to hit their revenue hard where only 30% is their top 10 customers. So a majority of their revenue is made up by little contracts that don't make up huge percents of their revenue, which is great. Um, these guys, uh, there was a, one other thing I wanted to show you, but I'll, we'll touch on this first. Um, so this kind of shows you a, a clear path towards profitability. Um, their their gross margins looking pretty good. I mean, sitting at twenty nine percent, that's not bad. Um, I do think that they can get that to uh, to forty percent though. I really do. Um, over time, this is the group revenue. Actually, I think what I think the uh, the gross margin might be a little bit less than that. I think it might be more like twenty two percent. I'll have to look. But if you if you know if you know what it is, let me know. Um, but I know that they're, I think it's around 22% is their 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 gross margin uh, percentage. 60% uh, of revenue from contractual minimum guarantees. Um, their group adjusted EBITDA, 6% um, in 2018 for 5 million. Uh, they were actually negative in 2019 at 9 million negative. Uh, 14 million in 2020, 35 million in 2021, and 68 million projected in 2022. Uh, guys, that that's that's pretty good. That's pretty good. 29% up until 2020. I actually think they can grow that more, um, up upwards of 40% as time goes on. Uh, that reoccurring revenue builds up, things like that. That'll help out tremendously. Um, there was one other thing I wanted to show you in here, and it was just how many um, events they've done. Okay, yeah, so they've done over 240,000 sporting events uh, so far, and they've got, uh, they're in 150 different countries, and I wanna say that they are partnered with over 100 sports leagues. So they're, they've got a proof of concept, guys. They've got the, you know, the proofs in the pudding. They've got the, the data. 
um, which is very important. So let's take a look at the chart. Look at this big old gap up here. Boom. Um, you can see here came out, you know, SPAC down around the $10 range, gapped up, um, got up around 12 bucks, came all the way up here, gapped up again, uh, reached a high of $22.89. Uh, traded downwards, uh, you know, market correction, traded down, got beat down, came all the way down to around 13 bucks, even lower around, yeah, 1350. And then look at these last three days, boom, boom, boom. And then boom, gapped clear up like 20 something percent, uh, 23.8%. And now it's sitting at 1940. Uh, when I was looking at it yesterday, 1935, when I was looking at it, uh, Yesterday it was down here at like the fifteen dollar mark. That is a massive gap up, uh, guys. I'm I'm gonna add this stock, but I'm gonna wait for it to pull back. Uh, I think it will eventually pull back. I mean, I don't know if it's gonna come and fill this whole gap. Uh, it looks like the market is starting to turn around, uh, but I am gonna see if I can get it to pull back a little bit because that's a big gap. I would have sure liked to get in at fifteen, uh, you know. But hey, we'll see what happens. So if you are going to buy this stock, if you don't already own it watch it, see if it'll pull back, see if it'll, if it'll come back and try to fill this gap up a little bit. Uh, I don't think $19 is a bad price. I do think it's a little bit much right now. Um, you know, typically after merger happens, pipe investors sell, uh, you know, things like that happens, the stock trades down a little bit. So that's, that's probably what I'm gonna do. If I don't see it come back down tremendously, uh, you know, down at least uh, to the, around the $17 range, uh, you know, I'll probably wait till post merger, uh, but, but watch it. I do want to own this stock because I think over the course of the long term, they are going to absolutely kill it. Uh, and I don't want to, you know, I don't want to miss out on that. I like investing in the gambling industry, the online sports betting industry. We've got DraftKings, uh, you know, FST, Fast Acquisition Corp and, uh, and, uh, RSI. So, uh, also Penn National Gaming and a couple of the other, uh, you know, Caesars and things like that. So, uh, guys, I do like this. Very bullish. Think they're going to do very well. I think that if they can continue to hit their revenue marks as sporting events open back up, uh, states get legalized, they're just going to capture so much of the market. So uh, let me know down in the comments what you think about it. If you uh, if you like this stock, if you own it, I'd love to know. Uh, if you've got a price target on it, I'd like to see that as well. I did see a couple articles uh, where some analysts put a $21 price target on it. I think that's more short term. I think uh, over the course of the next uh, you know year, by the end of 2021, you could see them above that. Uh, but again, guys, this big gap up was pretty intense. I would try to wait for it to pull back. Uh, this video is for entertainment purposes only. I am not a licensed stockbroker. Always do your own research and due diligence. Uh, you know, don't just take my word for anything, but uh, put it down in the comments. Uh, you know, if uh, if I was wrong on that, uh, on that licensing thing with uh, the NFL, uh, but you know, I like it. I think it's going to do well. Uh, you know, I will just have to see what the price target ends up coming out to. So uh, that's it for today, guys. I really appreciate you guys' time. I hope you guys had a great weekend. Let's get out there and kill it this week. I love you all. Thank you so much for your support. Remember to like the video if it gets you, you know, brings you any value. Come join us at the Patreon, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.